Hey, what's up, everybody? Gene Machine by Venki Ramakrishnan. Normally, when I do these reviews, I start by explaining who the author is, but the book itself does a very good job of that because this book is the story of the work of the author. I'm not going to worry about spoilers because it says right on the cover that Venki Ramakrishnan is the winner of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. So the work that we're talking about is the working out of the atomic structure of the ribosome. The central dogma of biology it says that DNA makes RNA and RNA makes proteins. Those proteins are us. And the ribosome is the biological machine that reads the RNA and actually builds these protein chains. This might be the most important concept in biology. I will say from the beginning that this book was a joy to read. I read it in very few sittings because I kept wanting to know what happens next. Similar to the last book I reviewed, The Song of the Cell, this book switches off between a science book with exp explanations, diagrams, and detailed information, and the narrative story of Venki Ramakrishnan's career as a scientist. Going into this book, I'm not sure what kind of book I thought it might be, but it surpassed any expectations I had. I bought this book because I wanted to learn more about genetics, which the book definitely satisfied, but it was much more than a science class. This book felt very much like watching a movie, a good movie, where you become familiar with the protagonist and you're with him on his journey as he formulates his goal and you're really rooting for him. There are alliances, plot twists, and even what you might call a villain in his story. So Venki and his team are working on the ribosome, and over the course of the story, more teams of scientists are trying to do the same thing that he and his team are doing, so they become rivals. What Venki's work entails exactly is x-ray crystallography. Much of the story involves slow but steady improvements in the methods of x-ray crystallography. And Venki makes it so interesting to see how all these rival teams are fighting to stay in the race to be the ones to crack that code. It's not really talked about much between rival teams, but everybody knows that everyone else wants to win the Nobel Prize for the ribosome. Everyone is on the edge. The stakes are incredibly high, and this is going on for like a decade. The work done in this book covers large parts of people's careers. As an example of the technology slowly improving, what they're doing involves firing x-rays at protein crystals, but the x-rays degrade the protein, which makes it difficult to obtain a good result. They found that if they sufficiently lowered the temperature, the protein crystals could tolerate the x-rays better, but protein crystals, which have to be made in a lab, don't line up flush like true crystals, and the spaces in between contain water and lowering the temperature would freeze the water and damage the crystals. So they worked out a way to replace the water with a kind of antifreeze, which allowed them to lower the temperature more. This book is full of science like that, but it also goes into ethics in science. For example, to what extent is it acceptable to start working on a problem that someone else's breakthrough just opened up? They also go into the bureaucracies surrounding science grants, and the Nobel Prize, and the many different kinds of relationships a scientist might form. This book also does such a good job of showing the very human aspect of the work scientists do. Sometimes we feel like science is done in the name of progress or for the good of humanity, but more in accordance with books like Elephant in the Brain and Alfred Adler's Understanding Human Nature, Sometimes there's a lot more ego involved in the work behind these great uh, breakthroughs in science. And sometimes it comes down to chance, bumping into a certain person at a certain time. But Venki shows that, just like with the rest of us, feelings of pride, jealousy, envy, and even downright pettiness can be factors at play behind advances in science. I really think that Venki deserves respect for being so open and honest about himself in writing this book because some of the stuff in here makes him look kind of petty. Some of the exchanges between these rival teams of scientists made them seem like high schoolers. Now, as I say that, bear in mind that 
the behaviors I'm talking about are absolutely normal human behaviors, even if we don't like to admit that we can be guilty of them. Vanke is the first scientist I've heard openly discuss them. And these are serious matters. If a scientist makes a genuinely significant contribution to their field, they understandably aren't going to be happy if they don't get their due credit. This book is nonfiction, but it very much feels like reading a fiction story. There's acts, intrigue, suspense, a palpable sense of urgency, and the ending delivers such a cathartic payoff. While reading this book, you spend a lot of time thinking about what it will be like when he wins the Nobel Prize, and it's pretty amazing when it actually finally happens. There's an entire chapter on the Nobel ceremony, meeting the king and princess of Sweden, delivering his lectures, and suddenly you're being treated like a genius, but Venki says that a big part of winning the Nobel is luck. Luck on who your mentors were, who you know, uh, what problems you happen to stumble into at what time all play a huge role in winning a Nobel Prize. Venki talks about pre-Nobel and post-Nobel syndrome and how they can dictate behaviors in scientists. How before you win a Nobel, you're focused on winning the Nobel, and how after you win the Nobel, suddenly you're like a rock star and it can be very hard to continue meaningful work. Many people do manage to do this, but some of them let the Nobel go to their head and their careers suffer for it. This book makes you really think just about the progression of human work and progress over time. What I mean is these guys spent so many years working on this problem and after they succeed, pulling off a similar feat is so suddenly becomes somewhat trivial and anyone can do it and even better as the technology continues to improve. All of these people work so hard on this problem and now it's a simple matter and if they hadn't done it, someone else would have soon. This book talks about how progress is a product of what is going on in time. Progress is dependent on progress and is pretty much inevitable and in how we act as agents of progress. But does it really matter who was the one to publish a paper? One more thing I would like to add is that Venki Ramakrishnan has a wonderful sense of humor. He's one of those guys that is able to use humor in a subtle way to great effect and it added a nice touch to this book and it serves to add to the humanness factor too. Venki really feels like someone you'd want to hang out with or at least someone I'd want to hang out with. Okay guys, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like science, or you like a good tale with a very happy ending where the good guy wins. Or more importantly, if you would like to learn more about the ribosome, check out Gene Machine by Venki Ramakrishnan.